Lesson 6.7, we're going to relate multiplication and division. We can use multiplication to help us divide. Multiplication and division are opposite operations. An inverse operation is an opposite operation. Subtraction is the inverse of addition. Just as 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 and 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. Multiplication is the inverse of division. 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5 and 5 times 2 is equal to 10. If we want to find the total of all the equal groups, we multiply. If we want to find how many equal groups or how many are in each group, we divide. Inverse relationships are opposites. Big, small. That's an inverse relationship. They're opposites. The opposite of big is small, and the opposite of small is big. Long and short. Those are inverses of each other. On, off. We can think of many more. In, out, arriving, leaving. Those are inverse relationships. And addition, subtraction, are inverses, and multiplication division are inverses. They're opposites. Bob went to the fair. He went on the Ferris wheel six times and used the same number of tickets each time. He used 18 tickets in all. How many tickets did Bob use each time he went on the Ferris wheel? We can use bar models to understand how multiplication and division are related. There's 18 tickets in all. We know he went on the Ferris wheel six times, so we can make six sections of our bar model. That means we have 18 divided by six. We need to find what the quotient is. We can think of a related multiplication fact. We think six times something is equal to 18. Can you think of a multiplication fact for 6 that would equal 18? If you said 3, you're right. We can put a 3 in each section of the bar model. We know that every time he went on the Ferris wheel, he needed 3 tickets. 18 divided by 6 is equal to 3, and 6 times 3 is equal to 18. These are related numbers. The inverse of division is multiplication. We can find the answer, the quotient, to a division problem by remembering our multiplication facts. We can use an array to see how multiplication and division are related. We make an array with 18 counters in three equal rows. So I counted out 18 counters here. They're in three equal rows. We don't know how many are in each row. So we make one, two, three rows, and we're going to put an equal amount into each row until we've used all the counters. So now we have one row, two rows, three rows, and we can put another counter in each row. We put another counter in each row. We want to make sure they have the same amount in each row. Then we'll be able to figure out how many are in each row. And we keep doing this. Then we count how many counters we had in each row. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Eighteen counters divided by three rows is six in each row. And the same array can be used to find a total number. If we know there are three rows with six in each row, we can count them to know that three times six is equal to eighteen. Multiplication and division are related. Here we have an array. We need to fill in the empty spaces. It says there are three rows of blank and it's equal to 21. We have three rows 
There are 21 counters here. We count how many are in each row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven in each row. We have three rows of seven, which is equal to 21. That means three times seven is equal to 21. It also means that 21 divided by three is equal to seven. We can see how multiplication and division are related. They are inverse operations of each other. Here we have five times six is equal to 30. And 30 divided by five is equal to six. We can see the related multiplication facts. We have a five, a six, and a 30. We have a five, a six, and a 30. We know both sides of an equal sign should represent the same amount. If we see two times two is equal to 12 divided by something, we solve one side first to be able to solve the other. Two times two is equal to four. That means 12 divided by some number is equal to four. 12 divided by four is equal to three. Three times four is equal to 12. Both sides of the equal sign are equal to four. Here we have 24 divided by four is equal to two times some number. We do this side of the equal sign first, 24 divided by four, that's equal to six because six times four is equal to 24. That means this side must be equal to six. So two times some number is equal to six. Do you know? If you said three, you're right. If there's an unknown amount on one side of the equal sign, we can solve the other side to help us. Here we have a word problem and we have a table with data to help us solve the problem. Dave paid $28 for tickets to see a movie. He paid for his wife and himself and for his children. How many children did Dave pay for? Well, it says adults are $8 and children are $4. It's also telling us that children under two are free, but it wants to know how many he paid for. Well, Dave and his wife are adults and adults are $8. So we need to subtract their tickets first from the $28. $8 times two, for Dave and his wife, that's two people, that's equal to $16. We do $28 minus the $16 for the adults, Dave and his wife, that's gonna leave us $12 that he paid for children. We can see that the children's price is $4 a piece. We do the $12 divided by the $4 for each ticket, that means there were three children he paid for. 12 divided by four is equal to three, and four times three is equal to 12. So we did multiplication, then subtraction, then division. Three different operations just to solve this problem. So we can use multiplication to help us divide because multiplication and division are opposite operations. They're inverse operations. We can use a bar model, we can use an array to help us, and remember, both sides of an equal sign should represent the same amount. I hope you're doing very well, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye.